this is like you can do it with a little force because you're justified but but you're, you're okay. justified you're glorified you're exemplified <laughs> yes hello and welcome back to the croak and crow podcast i am spencer cardia and i am tupperware because i keep it fresh <laughs> and this here is Frank, our main man with no plan for his future. But today is a great day. Yeah. The weather's warm. Yeah. You know, after all that snow, we're getting 50 degree days and allergies. I, <laughs> and the allergies are coming out. You can never be happy, can you? <laughs> um, no, it's it's all good. Got to enjoy these days when you can. Because mm-hmm. in the summer, if you get a 50 degree day, well, it's always changing, you know. Yeah, the grass is always greener. It's changing. But yeah, um, middle of the week podcast, right? Because that's what our Thursday podcast is. The mailman came. The mailman came. Um, before we started our show, I was told that there is a package for me, and I said, "Okay, let me open it." And then you said, "Nope, wait to be on air. Save it for the podcast. Save it for the podcast." And so that's what we did. So it's an unboxing. It's of an unboxing. Was that that was an old uh, an old intro from like the second episode? Oh yeah, you're right. Welcome back to Croak and Crow, where we dive into religious topics in an open mind and try to uh, find our own reasoning for things. An unboxing. An un- an unboxing of of thoughts. Right. An unboxing. We were unbox like unboxing of ideas. Yeah. So, yeah. That was like I think second episode. Yeah. All right, I'm a little nervous. It's interesting what you're doing. You think you would have... I don't even think I need the scissors, but... Okay. Here we go, guys. It's a Rolex, isn't it? No, well, sorry. I can hear... Shake the box. I can already... <laughs> I can hear something. Oh, man. Oh! It is a Liberty Bell. Bell. Show the camera. Bell, bell, my liberty bell. I'm so in love with you. So, so this was for a virtual 5K mm-hmm. that I participated in. That's quite the metal. <laughs> this is you put heavy. it on backwards. You put it on backwards. I think there's no words. Oh, that's good. The you know, pursuit. you know, you know me and Bell. Oh, you know what? You know what the um, fundraiser for that was? Now that I'm. I see Pursuit of Liberty. What was it? That was for the celebration of the anniversary of women voting. I think it's like the Women League of Women Voters is who who ran that, who um, organized that 5K. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm a champion. It's really heavy. <laughs> it's loud, too. It's funny, though. It's so big. <laughs> I, got, I got my bling on. You can give it to him. That's you, actually a really th- good idea. You think he'll shake the belt too much? <laughs> there you go, Frank. It's matching his rose, rose gold jacket. Because <laughs> actually, fun fact, Frank did run the 5K with me. Well, but. you know what you could also do in a 5K? What's that? You could walk through it. <laughs> it's Walk Through Thursday. Roll the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. All right, guys, we are back. It is walk through Thursday, our third favorite time of the week. Yeah. After wacky Wednesdays and fantastic Fridays. Yep, right. But we, on walk through Thursdays, we dive into Bible verses, quote by quote, line by line, and. We are currently in the midst of the 23rd Psalm. Right. If you haven't seen the first and second episode, go watch them now. Because we're on the third episode, baby. <laughs> so what have, what, have we, what have we read so far? We have read, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm-mm. I shall not want. That's what I was, I was, I was saying. Oh. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> um, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. All right. So what are we at? We're at number three. Uh, I got so many papers, so many things to read. Number three. 
Here we go, guys. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes. All right. We're we're out of we're out of the uh, the tutorial. Yeah. We're into the we're into the deeper stuff. Right. We're not even talking about sheep today. No. We're talking about souls. It's 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 yeah. It's it's just God now. Now it's just God. <laughs> now like it's not in the in the name sake of a shepherd. It's like for my name's sake. Yeah. Now I say, and it doesn't matter these little word changes. I say he guides me. I don't know where I picked that one up, but. I he say guides he, me in the path. Paths of righteousness. Um, well, yeah, leadeth guides. I don't know, but but interestingly, I for some reason, the intelligent being that I am, I always have trouble with the word righteousness. Righteousness. Because or or just righteous, it's used a lot in the Bible, and I, and I literally, there was a time years ago that I emailed a bunch of pastors and um, rabbis um randomly <laughs> <laughs> cold calls yeah <laughs> and ask them if they could explain righteousness to me um they weren't that helpful they were nice but it was basically anything you could have googled it was nothing yeah that i really sink my teeth into and the other thing is the question i emailed those people at that time was righteousness and also so what we've read so far is um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. Next week, we're going to start saying thou. So this is talking about him. But then right in the middle of the, of the psalm, it turns to, to talking directly to God. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what that is. I, got, yeah. I don't know if it's just the way of writing, of mm-hmm. this like back and forth, because... In the um, in my favorite Bible verse, which is like the um, "Thou shall not" or no, don't don't let the mighty boast in the mighty, right. don't let the mighty boast in wealth, but let those who boast boast in this that they understand and know me, for I am the Lord. I act with steadfast, and then it switches to God's perspective. Like, right, I, I will act with interesting. Steadfast. So it does that. Yeah, so I, I don't know with the uh, the old. Yeah, so we don't know, but this this will be. The end of that part where we're saying he, he, he. And then um, as for the word righteousness, I just, you might have no problem with the word righteousness. I just thought. I just don't think too much into it. So you just think it means good? Well, we're not there yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're jumping to probably our, our last finale. <laughs> we're we're going to go, we're going to go word by word, okay. line by line. So let's start with the first. He restoreth my soul. But, and also. If you say righteousness again. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> but, um. It's 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 a continuation of the sentence before it, isn't it? Um, he leadeth me beside the waters. He no, I'm saying like from on there. Can I say for a second? Uh, isn't it just like? Oh no, it's its own sentence. I thought it was like. I guess that's my as my bad. When I pray it, I act like it's a whole sentence. Like I I act like they live together. Ah. Uh. Um, he leadeth me. He guides me. He restores my soul. You know, uh, like okay. boom. But no, it stands alone. Okay. I need to just relax for a second. Okay. Yeah. You know why? We need fresh eyes on it. Because as as I've said, I repeat it like a mantra over and over again. So yeah. I'm probably not the best person to see it. And they call me Spencer Fresh Eyes. <laughs> so my first question is this when I'm reading this. I, I see restoreth my soul. And I'm like, I thought my soul was un fallible yeah. my my body my actions can mess up but my soul is perfect because it's made by god so why do you need your soul restored what does it mean to have your soul restored these shined, are my question to you shined up like Buff, you, buffed out your shoes you get taken to the to the cobbler but yes yeah, so, so what does that mean he, he restoreth my soul. soul i think that your soul is always a shining star mm-hmm. i think when he restores your soul he's restoring it for what you think had damaged it here it's a, okay it's you know because people people think um you'll hear people say i can't go, oh if i go to church i'll get struck by lightning if i use holy water it'll burn mm. you know and um so many people ha- who some of it's warranted they've done some very terrible things other others it's not it's yeah. ridiculous but um maybe it's telling them if they can't convince the person 
that you're still good. It's like, I'm not good. I, I suffocated my baby. <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> Start over. If you think I'm not good, I, I, I killed my neighbor. <laughs> Who was a baby? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Who invited me? If you think <clears throat> if you think that you're not good because you did a terrible crime. No help. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you're just leaving it there. No. I can't no, hear any more baby. No amount baby, of, I'm not going to baby crimes. No amount of convincing someone you know, you know that, right? Some people can't be convinced that they're good. Yeah. Maybe it's just a psalm, a song, a, you know, a mantra mm -hmm. to them. Okay, fine. You know what? I'm going to restore your soul. There you go. All better. Yeah. I don't know. Is that too elementary? Is that too, like, basic? I don't know. No, I mean, like, I, I, I think... I think restore... Hmm, how do I put this? I Yeah, I think your, your soul is invaluable, but I, I think... You know, with when you restore a car, mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, no, a car's not a good good example because you like have to put in a new engine and stuff. You ever you watch these videos? Do you guys watch these videos where it's just like a, like antique restorations? Oh yeah. And they get an old, decrepit, rusty knife, and then they restore it, and it's like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. And the cool part about it is that knife is like you you're not replacing the knife. The knife isn't the nice the knife got some rust on it and stuff, but. There is metal inside. It has the foundation. And so... Yeah, I some think, things you can't change anything about it or it will no longer be yeah. vintage or whatever. So I, I think it's like that. Like I, I, I think, you know, soul and body and just doing these things that people say are unforgivable. It's like you're, you're never breaking that knife. Like you got a little rust on, but, right. but rust on it. You know, it might look a little dirty, but believe me, that knife is, is still good. Right. All it needs is a, is a, a, a nice... Um, belt grinder and some polish in which the lord will provide you right and then you're not you're back to slicing things up yep so yeah i think i think that's what, sort of what it means because it's that x because that is a, I mean, what is external of the soul is your body and, and your right worldly actions and i think that can get this buildup of rust right and you're like what do i do i'm rusty i'm, I'm useless <laughs> that's what you say I'm, I'm you're like the tin man <laughs> you're like i'm useless i can no longer cut the cheese right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right um and then god's like come here right <laughs> <laughs> and then um good as new and so many things are hard to comprehend so many heavenly things i should say <laughs> you know <laughs> let's just start there so many heavenly things are hard to comprehend and you know this this um everlasting life or eternal yeah. life and it's like wait how 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 many years how like you know is it electricity that's plugged in is it a battery is it you know he is constantly restoring your soul like you know it's that's why it's always alive that's why we'll always be alive mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't run out doesn't run out you know they say yeah uh, a car can run forever if you just keep on replacing the parts yeah but at what point does the car no longer become the original car anymore it's that boat analogy where you change a plank yeah of wood. Right, right right this has nothing to do with souls i was just no this is different <laughs> you, you'll always be you <laughs> Um, so I think, is, did, did we get, he restored he my soul? He restored our soul. And, you know, um, also praying every week, I'm going to say it, if you pray for someone else. Um, he restored their soul. Right. If, you know, you, you someone you know might be struggling mm -hmm. and you might be worried for them that they can no longer cut the cheese as a rusty knife. Stop saying cut the cheese. <laughs> um you might be worried for them mm -hmm. it's like but like we're all not we're all sharp knives why can't they just like is it too late for them are Never. they going to be okay and it's like god will mm -hmm. shine up that knife and he will sharpen that blade and he will restore their soul yeah because souls are unfallible like i said i mean no matter how much external buildup you get right what you you can't damage a soul no 
can't do it, even if you try. Right. And that's why the devil's so interested in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Because um, he can't touch the soul. So it's like, let me, while I have them here on earth, let me see what damage I can do. Yeah. Um, and But that's all just the body because the soul is protected in the pea pod. All right. So that's He Restoreth My Soul. We hammered it home. We hit it out of the park. We're so good at what we do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right. So now, now is the next part, which is a long. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And what did you say it was? He guides me. I say he guides me. He guides me. But in it's the all the same. But I, I don't know why, but that's how I say it. He guides me. Okay. So he guides me in the path of righteousness. He guides me in the path of righteousness. And you don't know what that word means. I know. Because I have a definition right here. Okay, go ahead. I feel like Mari. Or no, like Dr. Phil. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> so you say you don't know what righteousness is. Well, it just so happens that I have the definition right. And then you're like, no. You should have been talking like more Southern because that wasn't Dr. Phil at all. Well, well yeah. he- hello there. That's better. I'm Dr. Phil. Yeah. Well, right here we have the definition of righteousness. But you have to be like meaner. He's kind of mean. Right. He's not mean. He is. Well, I'm going to show you the definition of righteousness. That's it. That's it. And you tell me if you still know what it means. Yeah. Okay. 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 Be regular. <laughs> righteousness. The quality of being morally right and justifiable. 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 Because you know how um, when you're fighting with somebody and and you and you there's a question of whether you were in the wrong in the wrong. And, and you'll say, I'm justified. That blah blah blah. You know it. It mean right. It means you. Yeah. So the quality of being morally right, walking morally, th- walk, m- morally. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying you're saying it wrong. Uh-huh. I'm saying so for for all in for all intents and purposes. Um, I think righteousness can be uh switched out for just good, right? He reminds me on the good path. They say it, stay on this the paths of good, right? But. It's, I guess it's more than that because it is a different word and they use it a lot. Righteousness. Because I feel like it's more emboldened. Like <clears throat> being morally good is like I'm morally good and it's like living a life of righteousness. I feel like my chest is no, out. No, but it's true because they'll say like he was a righteous man. But I think that, And it is stronger than but, good. So we were, we stumbled over the justifiable word, but I think that is part of it. It's, okay. it's like morally right. It's like I'm going to be kind. Okay. I'm gentle. But this is like, you can do it with a little force because you're justified. By, but you're, you're okay. justified. You're glorified. You're exemplified. <laughs> yes. And you say with your chest out and you say, no, that is wrong. Hmm. And that is right. Mm-hmm. Be kind. Don't hate. I am living the righteous life. Right. So he leads you in the way in the paths right where you would be in the right <laughs> yeah but yeah so so and then you have the at the end there for his namesake again i don't really know what that means i think it's like what we always say right what i always say where i say you know when people say it's why i'm not really with the um with the all I got to do is say, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to heaven. Mm-hmm. Is I, th- I think what Jesus taught us is to live like him. Live the life that he lives. Like, which is love and neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Unconditional love. And so, for his namesake, I think is saying that same thing. It, it's, I am a righteous God. It's like, don't do this for me. Like, as I sit on my throne and work. Right. It, it's, I'll lead you in the path of the righteousness. Because I am the paths of righteousness. Like, right. I, I am the moral way. Right. I am the unconditional No, love. that's really interesting. And can, can, to to um think the fact that I've been saying it for so long, and I kind of never really wanted to look too deep into it because I was a little confused. But now that you're talking about it and the way you presented it, the first part of your presentation, when you were like, I can stick my chest out and I can, I can stand, you know, proud not not be afraid of the light of day what i'm doing is righteous Mm -hmm. but then you kind of um come off the gas a little on the break for for his namesake because when you were talking i thought hmm wouldn't that kind of uh kind of put you a little bit into being like egotistical or yeah uh yeah boasty you know yeah no um yeah, exactly, and, and it's it goes back. Like, to don't that. forget, yeah, you you have the strength and you are justified, but because 
because you're I'm, doing my work. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it's the path I lay down for you to do. Not I don't even lay down for you because that like. I'm doing what's right because this path was laid before me. It's like that path is there. I showed you something and then you chose to do it. And then you chose to do it. And it, it always goes back to the big man upstairs because it, it's it's for his name. It's like, you know, when I, when I hear namesake, you know, it's like I think of once again that father relationship where or mother. Yeah. And, and where it's when you're doing something that they've set you up to do. You know, like right. if your dad was a world time boxer. And that you're boxing for his namesake. And it's like, as right. good as you get, it's always... Look at Khabib Nurmagomedov. You know, it, um, one very, very uh, devout man to the Muslim religion. But he'd always give every every win. You know, he says, like, Alhamdulillah. And then he th- says... His, the reason why he retired is because his dad died. Oh, he retired? And he retired. Oh. And so he was like, I don't want to fight without my dad being here but it was always that respect of, of the of god and the people the person who taught him because it, right. it was always like I mean, it's what kept him humble it's because he was like what am i what am i without god what am i without my father and so i think this is the same thing it's right. you you can be righteous you know he was mm-hmm. he was mauling people but it's what, what what am i without god right He he's and then like if he messed up he would say yeah, my, my my dad's gonna my dad's gonna put me in my place, and it always kept them like, I understand my mission here. Right. Yeah. Um. And you know, when you say people, when we say the word Christian or any word really, um, any spiritual word or religious word, and people have stereotypes associated with it, or they might have bad connections with it. You know, if you are if you are going down a path of righteousness. <clears throat> and um for for his namesake in his namesake um it's it's what we talk about when we say don't tell someone to be a christian or to be you know a child of god yeah be one and then people will say um who is this person that walks d- this way and goes yeah. you know here that would honor his name more than holding people down and saying yeah this yeah, is how you 100%. do it and 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 you know, my thought is always this, right? Someone who doesn't believe in religion, but they love their neighbor unconditionally, and and that's it. As Christians, what do we believe? We believe Jesus and and God is, is in and ev- is in everyone. Mm-hmm. We're all the children of God, mm-hmm. and so I think even Jesus said it once. He was like, "When you're speaking to that person, you're speaking to me." Or, or what do you what, do? You know what I'm talking about? It was like yeah, quote, of course. Yeah, where, but I don't know exactly how to say it. Where it's like. Um, but so with that said, is it, um, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers that you do unto me? Yes, Mm -hmm. that one. And and so it's the same thing. It's the person who attacks people. You're attacking Jesus. You're attacking people who they don't believe in religion and they love everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, our belief is that we, they are loving a higher power in our, in our minds. We'll never, we'll never say, you know, like. Oh, by the way, like that means you're loving Jesus. Because once again, that's condescending. Right. But it, it, internally, we, we think it's about loving the neighbor. You love the neighbor, then you do, then you love Jesus. Right. And it's so much bigger than, and, and I really think that God gave us um, life tokens, you know, um, Easter eggs around the ways um, in, in, in little nuggets that we could yeah. comprehend. And so even though it says for for um in his namesake don't get I don't think don't get tied up in okay the name cuz then that's a whole other controversy what of like like what is what name god yahweh i am you know um Allah. jehovah you know this name this name this name we are speaking earthling when we say these words well yeah i mean like and so even though he said, I am who I am, when we do get to heaven, it's not like Jack and Jill. Like, it, it, you know what I mean? Well, like, yeah, no. And I mean, that, that's that been said over and over where even what, what is, like even the words for God derive from sounds that represent God, right? Am I, yeah. right, am I right with that? No, I know. It's very like, confusing and it's very in Judea, intricate. In Judaism and everything, it's yeah. like it's characters it's that characters. Are, are representative, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. not... And it's what we use to you know, live normal lives and, right. not, and be able to communicate about it. But 
Um, so it's, I believe that it's written in words that we understand. It's written in words, even, you know, I'm not even saying English. I'm saying whatever language it's written in. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't, it's not exactly the name, like, you know, a human name that. No, and that does cause a lot of division. It does. Because how many different kinds of Christianity are there? A lot. There's a lot. And they all believe in very different things. Mm-hmm. But this is this is my what, what I view. I, I, I think often there's, because we know it less in America, is stereotypes against Islam. Right. And then a, a, a Christians who have, who hold these stereotypes look at Islam and say, okay, we're all together now. And we are all against, not against you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're better you than you are. Thing. Yeah, like, when, yeah, you believe in the wrong thing. Yeah. When I'm not going into details of, of, you know, different beliefs and who Muhammad was and who Jesus was in, in their eyes and if he was the Messiah or not. But on a God scale. Just God. Yeah. We believe in the, in the exact same God. Right. In Judaism, we believe in the, it's it's the God who that Abraham had a covenant with in the, in the, in the er, some of the earliest stories of the Old Testament. So I, it's funny. I, I bring up Khabib Nurmagomedov a lot, but I, I like him. He, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I like guys who have a lot of confidence, but are also spiritual and, and religious. Because yeah. like that to me is, is like the coolest thing, mm-hmm. it's especially when you're at such a high level. Right. And it's like you still have that grounded faith. But there, you see some pretty nasty comments about him. <laughs> where it, it's it'll be from people who worship who we call God. And they're like saying how Allah is, is made up and fake and that he believes in the wrong God. And just it's so ignorant and silly to me because I'm like, it's one thing to disagree on on things past that. You know, something like Muhammad said or like I said, mm-hmm, right. well, we we think Jesus was all, was the Messiah, God on earth. But if you're just talking about God, like G.O.D., who, who Abraham believed in. This, who, yeah, all, higher power, the, all, creator of the universe. Yes. Yeah. We, it's, the, it's, two, it's two different names for the same person. Two different names for the same person. So when it says um, for his name's sake, it's more to do as a, as God would do. Yeah. You know, um, and the, and that does translate to what you said for humans, you know, do as your father would do. So like if yeah. you're in business and the father was a righteous, upstanding man mm-hmm. who didn't cheat people, you know, and then you took over the business, do as your father would do. Yeah. You know, he... He had um, so many people trusting him and and so forth and be yeah be like me you know yeah no definitely I, and I I think and it's also very inviting you know when you think about it because you know a lot of um, Christians and um, I guess other religions uh, make this huge separation between God and then we're little mice down yeah. here but this is another invitation. You know, imagine if if you if your father it wasn't your father that owned the business. It was it was um some man. Yeah. But then you were invited to take over the business and then he said like do it in my name. You know, you're like you'd be honored like thank you for putting this um trust in me yeah. that I will represent you. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. I like the word represent cuz mm-hmm. cuz once again I, I think it the way it's written is very clear of and it's you see it time and time again with jesus and stuff it was it's not do as i say it's do what represents me that's good it's not (laughs) do what i say it's do what represents me right which is unconditional love not because i tell you to go love people right it's because that's represents what i what i put out and that's so important it's so important and that's why we get so mad when people say that they are godly people, yeah, and they're doing things that are very unrepresentative. Yes, yeah, I mean, of how he even treats them. Yeah, it's why we get mad at but hypocrites, you know, because it's like yeah, it's a hypocrite because we're like, what you're doing is not representative mm-hmm. of what we know God to be, and that's time time what he's asked us is is to be a representation of me, right nice <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not a walk through thursday if we don't just figure it all out by yeah the no but isn't it funny like i said i have been saying it for years upon years um but i guess i guess that's not too i guess that's not too groundbreaking because don't a lot of religious scholars go over the same lines verses and yeah and stories for their whole life in, in um in study so what i was going to say was can you believe that 
I could still need to work through, walk through something that I've already committed to repeating. But yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, and, and yeah. it's the living word, as they say. Yeah. No, it's definitely it's a good thing to get to, to do. You know, it's it's good to have these mantras and quick things to run through. If you say the Our Father or whatever, but right. it's also good to slow it down, slow motion, and go line by line and really let it resonate with you. Mm-hmm. It's good to have both balance. I think we shouldn't have another podcast where we don't say balance once. Okay. Because I like to put up the yin yang. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's March, and the the Pisces symbol is very yin yang ish, isn't it's it? It's Pisces season. Yeah. And the person across the table from me is a Pisces. Frank. Nope. <laughs> um, old Tupperware over here. So <laughs> get get ready for a a big birthday bash coming up later in the week. No, next week. Thankfully, sometime. We'll thankfully, it um, it's not a podcast day. So what day is it? Saturday. Saturday, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> oh, no, no. That Saturday, everyone mm. wish her a happy birthday. No. I'll remind you for the next no, two I'm days. No, I'm against it. As no. well. Thank you for coming to Walk Through Thursday. Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow with a fun... Frank-filled. Frank-filled <laughs> Frankincense Friday. Mm. Peace. Bye.